All right, friends, we're back at it, and today we will be talking about facility operations. So a couple of objectives for this chapter are to help us to understand and appreciate some of the nuances that are associated with what goes into managing everything in a sports facility from an operation standpoint. Also, the chapter talks about the changeover process, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to jump into some of the operational concerns involving facilities and facility management. Now, some of these aspects I'll discuss more detailedly, and then others I might skim over or gloss over, and others we will actually be talking about more in class. So without further ado, let's get started, if you don't mind. So, facility management and that from an operational stand standpoint is really done through effective insight control and coordination and we'll go back to what that means very shortly but space management really is about how a facility will be utilized how will that space be used and a Facility manager really needs to try to hit that sweet spot between overuse and underuse. Uh, underuse really is wasteful. We see often that facilities that were built for a specific event are often underused thereafter. And facilities that are overused can wear out rather quickly. So one of the important purposes of this chapter is really to talk about how the basics of scheduling can help uh, with a facility's most optimal use, and then also how some facilities might need assistance with cha uh, changeover management. And then we're going to kind of jump into some of the other aspects of the aspects of the facility, such as weight rooms and locker rooms and gymnasiums. So, one of the ways that a facility really uh, can help with uh, running properly from a scheduling and a, and a utilization standpoint is through space reservation. So space reservation is going to be part of this whole insight, control, and coordination uh, aspects uh, that I talked about a couple minutes ago. And insight is going to really talk about getting real-time status of your activities or receiving alerts um, in a timely manner. Um, Control really is about the ability to define and deploy and then uh, utilize the best practices for a facility and also to establish different performance levels and uh, different best practices. Of course, coordination is really uh, being able to communicate with others in real time, uh, whether it be constituents or uh, employees, and be able to um, per, uh, leverage your different aspects and your different platforms of your facility to effectively communicate. And that could be through uh, fax or email or the web, uh, text space, or just traditional phone. And one of the ways that we can help with insight, control, and coordination is through this reservation system. And it's just utilized through uh, the web and using software and help hopefully that can help to create data that will assist in a facility knowing who is going to be using the uh, grounds or the uh, elements of the facility and whether or not a changeover is required. Um, and it helps to uh, shape best practices. Uh, the system would also prevent overscheduling uh, and it will help in the planning process. So that's also important to understand. Now, if a changeover is required, um, that can be rather comprehensive. So a changeover is going to be where a, a facility needs to accommodate uh, a different activity than what it is cur currently using, and it needs to convert a facility from one activity to another. Now, it could be a very simple changeover, such as uh, putting out some mats um, on a gymnasium floor for a different game, 
or it could be more comprehensive, such as having to put down different surfaces going from uh, basketball to hockey or from hockey to basketball, such as what Madison Square Garden does or what the Global Spectrum uh, Management Company in Philadelphia does. But when a sophisticated changeover is necessary, um, the textbook recommends specific best practices. So first, of course, is making sure that properly trained staff are hired and utilized. So of course, a slow electrician or a slow forklift operator can significantly slow down the process. We're only as strong as our weakest link. Um, storing equipment that is in close proximity to the entrance floor uh, in the order that it's gonna be put down can also help to save time. Uh, making sure that all unnecessary equipment is kept out of the way is another way to speed up the process. And properly assigning staff uh, in different teams uh, to supervisors that might be specialized in a given area, that will also help with speeding up the changeover process. Having uh, supervisors and crew that are going to be uh, pro uh, properly trained and, and, and on call for that changeover when that game or event ends uh, is also going to be important so there's not much uh, downtime. Um, the changeover crews uh, in these professional management outfits are usually very specialized and highly trained and so that they can work well uh, on their own as a collective and not really need um, a very specific direction at all times so that can help with speeding up this process. Um, Equipment and personnel constantly moving will also help to speed up the process. In monitoring uh, and taking uh, taking pictures and videos as part of the process, and then reviewing the process can help with effectiveness. Of course, as part of this uh, control and uh, coordination aspect of the changeover process and facility management, making sure that policies are developed uh, so that people are kept safe and also. Um, coaches and players are not able to enter the, the uh, are, are not able to enter the facility as it's being changed changed over would also be important and then scheduling is important so um, the whether it's scheduling about when a game will occur or being wary of the details of the of the condition of the turf or your equipment that can also help with uh, preventing unforeseen issues from arising, which would uh, potentially create uh, costly delays uh, in the program. Now, in terms of prepping for an event, uh, we also need to make sure from an operations and grounds perspective that equipment is properly uh, installed and maintained. So for example, we've got a picture here of Safeco Field and it uses warmers uh, to heat the infield. And um, you can see that this is really in, uh, used to help thaw a field if it becomes cold or, or frozen. And, and the heaters are uh, next to second base in this one. Uh, for this picture, this is from arena, an arena football game for a facility in Philadelphia, and they're installing an end zone screen. So this is also part of the changeover process going from perhaps hockey or um, basketball to um, arena football and you look at the, the turf uh, that may be astroturf or it might be field turf but that also is a process. Now if we leave the realm of the changeover and we look now at the specialized components of the sports facility that the text talks about, the first thing that, the, the, that it mentions is weight rooms and some things to uh, keep uh, in mind when you're, in, uh, when you're trying to maintain the weight rooms from an operations perspective is making sure that the weight rooms are kept clean and safe. And this is more about liability than anything else. Um, if a facility, if a, a weight room is using faulty equipment that jams or is malfunctioning or other aspects such as the padding or uh, other elements are not working correctly, that can lead to incidents and accidents that could lead to liability. So inspection and proper replacement is very important. Also having a computer system or a system that captures data that can help you with logging um, the condition of your, of your weight room is helpful to establish that you as a facility are abiding by your duty of care to properly maintain the facility. Um, preventative maintenance 
can also be logged into that program. It's also very important. And making sure that there is enough um, uh, sitting areas and resting areas and that they are properly cleaned with appropriate uh, cleaning equipment, that the um, odors and perspiration are also uh, wiped from the facility to guard against uh, any sort of diseases, uh, whether it be staph infections or MRSA. And so this is certain, these are certainly some important aspects. Uh, the location and materials, uh, the, the location of the weight room in terms of how close it is to other areas such as uh, bathroom facilities or the locker room, that's certainly important. And then also uh, what materials the facility is made out of from a, um, a disease control standpoint. It's important. You want to use materials just like in the weight room that are resistant to different types of disease or that can be easily cleaned or slip resistant. Um, the HVAC system is also important, helping with ventilation uh, so that it can guard against any sort of disease. And uh, supervision is also important, that there's no blind spots and that facility uh, personnel are there to supervise, as well as security. So these are some elements that are important for the, the gym or the uh, weight room. Uh, the design of the facility, the types of the uh, placement of equipment and the condition of the equipment. Lock rooms are also important because of the uh, necessity to guard against uh, disease and provide functionality uh, within the facility. Uh, a, if you remember, a facility professional's number one job is to make sure that the facility is, or that individuals in the facility are kept safe and free from uh, danger. That goes back to, uh, for lock rooms, guarding against bacteria and infection, whether it's uh, MRSA or staph infections. So um, we've seen in the news over the last few years different professional sports players um, contracting different infections due to cleanliness issues within locker rooms. So again, this is uh, related to both safety and liability. So making sure that the floors are, are treated with uh, compounds that are uh, disease resistant or that can easily be treated, that's one thing. Contri continuously cleaning the facility, uh, the, the locker room is also important. And then also um, making sure that it's continuously being monitored and tested. Uh, slips and falls are also a potential danger, so making sure that um, the types of materials used for flooring near water, uh, wet areas are different uh, and that can, can be slip resistant. Maybe having um, one area of the locker room that's designated just for the dry area and one area of the locker room that is more for the wet area. Again, reducing moisture is going to be important for the locker room. It can be done through a strong HVAC system that can help with uh, dropping the spread of bacteria. And then um, making sure that uh, outlets are not in close proximity to water and that there are ground fault circuit interrupters, ground breakers, uh, to uh, mitigate against uh, electrocution. So these are just several um, ex suggestions in terms of helping to prevent infection or injury uh, from occurring in the locker room. Now concessions is also important. We'll talk about concessions. Um, making sure that the concession area uh, meets health inspector codes um, and does not uh, help to facilitate disease is, is at the number one concern for facility managers. Um, not that long ago, several sports facilities in Kansas City were um, found to be in violation of numerous health code uh, rules. Um, and one of them for the baseball stadium uh, on the lo lower left-hand corner is an example where the baseball uh, stadium was serving expired uh, pizza dough. And there was also uh, L, um, in, uh, in violations for uh, improper temperatures, uh, insect infestations, um, not properly storing food, etc. So these are very important uh, issues to uh, monitor and also be uh, in compliance with from a food safety perspective and concessions for facility uh, operations managers. And then from a uh, gymnasium perspective, making sure that the bleachers and flooring are in compliance, so making sure that bleachers are in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, making sure that rows um, are spaced uh, in the appropriate amount, 24 to 20 inches between spacing, making sure that um, 
that uh, the facility is in line with building code, that there's no more than 20 seats between aisles, because the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, is, is something where um, uh, uh, more than 20% of the American population has a qualified disability, and that these facilities need to be in compliance with the Americans with Disability Act. Now, from a um, gymnasium floor standpoint, um, it's a very uh, expensive investment for facilities to install a floor. They can uh, range in price from several thousand dollars to several hundred thousand dollars. So it's important to properly, um, uh, to properly maintain your investment. And a... Uh, a gymnasium floor can be uh, uh, impacted by the different types of events that are held on the floor, or the frequency that it's cleaned, uh, floor sanding, um, et cetera, et cetera. But there are some important best practices um, to actually make sure that uh, dents uh, in the floor uh, should be removed, um, that any sort of repairs should be discussed with the uh, manufacturer, uh, to see if it, uh, make sure that those repairs are not going to avoid the, the warranty. Um, any sort of impurities such as gum can be removed by freezing the gum with uh, dry ice um, and then removing it with a putty knife, uh, making sure that proper uh, chemicals are used, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a three-fourths inch thick tongue uh, and groove solid maple floor under certain circumstances, can last between 40 and 80 years. Solid maple floor uh, can also last between 40 and 80 years. So it's important to uh, take proper care of that floor. Um, you don't want to, to limit the lifespan. Now, the textbook also talks about establishing grass fields. And Grass fields really can be created by either sodding or seeding. Using sod, uh, that's pre, kind of pre-made grass that's already been grown out a little bit, and you kind of roll it out onto your field, or seeding. Seeding, the text refers uh, to seeding as the preferred method because it's a lower cost and uh, it's going to be, uh, be longer lasting under the right circumstances, and it also has reduced uh, labor requirements. So before seeding, uh, management really needs to look at the different types of grasses and what is uh, going to be the most appropriate. Um, the textbook talks about uh, a combination between Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass as a good uh, use because it combines several um, strengths and um, also what sort of environment the facility is located in. Um, in terms of maintaining once that um, the field has been uh, grown, aeration is important because it's going to open channels in the soil so that different nutrients and water and air can get in. And we've got an aeration machine. Different aeration techniques can be used. So there's actual um, core aerators that are going to be effective uh, but also time consuming. They remove the, the, the turf and then redistribute them across the grass. We see that little divots, little, little uh, they're not big divots, but they're you know, they, they kind of look like an animal dropping sometimes. A circulate, uh, uh, circulator or drum gonna, is going to aerate um, but can cause damage to the field. And then a slicer aerates provide um, the least complica uh, complexion uh, relief, but it creates um, the least amount of actual surface disruption. So different varying benefits and drawbacks right there. Now, the textbook does reference some uh, different aspects of Turf maintenance, so it talks, it talks about mowing and leaf removal and fertilization, weed management, pest control. It really goes down the litany of uh, suggestions. And um, we're going to uh, talk about this later in class, the different aspects. And I'm going to try to get an expert to help us through this process, help talk us through the different aspects of um, field maintenance. So... You can see what a beautifully main field, uh, maintained field looks like. It's properly um, sodded, uh, or properly seeded, excuse me, properly well maintained. The drainage is not an issue. You don't see any drainage issues. And really, um, it, 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 it's very time consuming. Now, there's also concerns when you're talking about uh, synthetic surfaces because um, 
there are different uh, uh, cleaning and maintenance issues, even though uh, with artificial fields, there's not nothing regarding seeding or sodding. But um, there's also been lawsuits involving ingestion of uh, rubber pellets that can impact the health of um, those who play. So we've seen some innovations involving more organic elements um, of, the, of artificial fields, but uh, um, artificial fields also can uh, deteriorate and uh, can be very, very expensive, several hundred thousand dollars to replace. Infield dirt is also important because it needs to be uh, properly groomed uh, before games. And um, another issue and concern is with bleachers is whether or not they're safe, the safety aspect. Uh, finally, uh, another aspect of safety is due to weather or traffic or moving parts of um, blades uh, as part of the maintenance process. So, of course, uh, the takeaway here for grass fields is that um, whether it's grass fields or turf, uh, is important as a concern because facility managers don't want to have a, pur a poor looking field because it's going to impact the credibility and image of the facility. Same thing goes with other aspects. Uh, a poor looking uh, gym floor is going to impact the credibility of the facility. Um, not properly um, you, not properly um, having uh, space management issues or not properly scheduling elements uh, for a facility is going to look bad on it. Uh, not having a well-maintained uh, weight room uh, and then even worse, weight rooms and locker rooms or concession stands that cause a health con a hazard or have health concerns are not only going to look bad from a facility image standpoint, but are also going to potentially lead to liability. So these are some of the issues that uh, facility managers should be wary of and uh, concentrate on uh, when we're talking about um, operations. So hopefully this was a helpful lecture, and I look forward to talking with you uh, outside of the video.